Hi, everyone. I'm Mark Fry, CLO of Nepris. Thanks for joining me on our live Facebook interviews as part of our virtual camp series. Um, this summer, we've been offering virtual camps for over seven weeks, and we're finishing week number five with School Careers Week. We have two weeks left. Uh, next week is How It's Made Camp. Um, we'll have great topics on how to make robots with Sphero, 3D printing, um, how cars are made at GM, and even a NASA satellite. The week following that is Future Week, where campers will get uh, to talk about NASA, drones, virtual reality, and all that cool stuff. The high school group will actually learn how to su successfully apply for, pay for, and succeed in their future in college. Um, but we're all here to talk to Andy with How It's Made Camp. Um, our special guest for today is Andy Powers, a master guitar builder from Taylor Guitars, to talk about what it's like to have guitar building to be in your career um, to a middle school group next week. So um, me personally, I am particularly excited about this session because I started to play when I was in elementary school. Um, it's also one of those instruments that's inseparable from our music experiences, and I'll bet you everybody has at least done air guitar, if not the real thing. I would like to introduce you to Andy Powers. Thank you for being here. Um, to it's start off, pleasure. tell Yes. So to start off, tell us a little bit about yourself, about your journey. Okay. What does it take to become a master guitar builder? Well, I'm I'm still trying to figure that out. I think um, I uh, I'm a guitar builder by trade, but it was something that I more fell into, not so much a like a well-defined career that I sought after, because I can't. The family that I grew up in, my dad's a carpenter by trade, and and uh, both my parents are hobbyist musicians. And so when I was real young, I started combining the things that I loved and the things that I was, that I was exposed to, being woodworking and music playing. So when I was a kid, I thought, oh, I'll build a guitar. That sounds like fun. You know, we have a guitar, but I've got a piece of wood that's big enough to make one. So I tried. And that was, that was really the start of my guitar making career was simply, I have a piece of wood. I, I like guitars. That sounds like a good thing to do. So I was kind of just a kid when I started building, maybe seven, eight years old when I tried to build my first guitar. And it was something that I found so captivating. I simply just didn't ever stop doing it. So by the time I was 12, 13, kind of throughout my teenage years, I was doing, I ended up doing all the repair work for the local music shops and I was building and I started building and selling custom instruments for started as, you know, family, friends and other recreational musicians and then turned into serving professional musicians in the area and then eventually museums and collectors and all kinds of other folks. So all along the way, this wasn't ever something I really thought of as a job or as a career path. It was more something that I was captivated by and loved doing. And then, you know, come to find out later in life, you know, one day you realize, man, all my friends are getting jobs. They've got, they're trying to figure out what to do with their life. And I stop and realize, oh, I've been in business for more than 10 years now. My bills are paid. I have a waiting list of customers. I couldn't quit even if I wanted to quit. <laughs> but more importantly, I absolutely love doing this work. I'll just keep doing it. I'll, I'll do this instead of getting a job. I can put that off until maybe I'm real old. You know, I'll just keep building the guitars and that would be great. So that's kind of how I, how I ended up in, as a guitar maker really, is it wasn't by some grand plan or design. It was simply going through those steps and never stopping them. And so I just kept getting further and further into it until you realize, oh, well, there's an opportunity to just continue doing this. You know, so it's kind of like carving out your own little spot in the world. So if I were gonna say one word, it's probably passion. You had a passion yeah. since you were young and you just followed that all the way through. So if other kids who are listening want to enter into the music business, music business is a wide range of, of, um, of things, but at least your field of instrumentation and instruments, um, what kind of things would you recommend that they uh, explore and try? Well. That's a really good question because one of the factors that I most appreciate about building guitars and participating in the music industry is you're combining every conceivable field. You're combining 
of course, what we would call the humanities, you know, the art, literature, poetry, you know, those, those kind of subjects that are very close to the human experience. They describe what things sound like, feel like, taste like, they describe that aspect. You're combining that with, um, I guess what you would consider more like the, uh, the STEM focused fields, the sciences, technology, engineering, mathematics, all of those fields kind of relate to how things are made. You know, how do you build something? And so in combining these different areas, you're deciding what should be built and then how can it be made? And so when we look at a way that a person would get into building instruments, for example, in, a, in the modern world, that could be via automation and computer. It could be via wood sciences. It could be through engineering. It could be through arts and humanities. It could be through um, music playing itself. It could be through uh, and, or, uh, machining and manufacturing technologies. It could be from any conceivable direction because as a modern instrument builder, we specialize in everything. You know, you think of what goes into building a guitar in the modern world, and it's we're working with sustainable natural resources, being woods, whether they're grown in a plantation, whether it was a naturally harvested material, whether it was grown specifically for building guitars. You're taking these natural materials and converting them into this art object that allows people to express themselves through music, but you're doing it using any conceivable tool that would do the job well. So that might be chisels or hand planes in some instances. It might be five axis computer guided robotic buffing machines in other instances, everything in between. So it's a little, it's a little hard to pinpoint one particular field of study to say, if you wanna be a guitar maker, do this. Certainly musical backgrounds valuable but equally as valuable would be a background in robotics and computer engineering. So, um, so you're bringing all of these different skills together to, be, <clears throat> to become a master builder. So along the way, I imagine you probably had mentors and folks you looked up to and taught you part of the skills of the trade. Um, so tell me a little bit about how important that was in your life. Uh, it's, it's very important. I mean, I don't think anybody's truly self-taught. In my case, I didn't have one, like a specific mentor that I was that was teaching me how to build guitars. What I did was I sought out any piece of information that I could find from any source. So when I started, this was pre-internet days, you'd go to a thing called a library, which was a big building that had lots of books in it. And you could, if there's they still exist, they're amazing. You can go in and you can find any sort of information on nearly any subject you're looking for. It's kind of like a manual version of Google or something. So you, I would go and find any book that I could get that was related to building instruments, the history of instruments or woodworking and combine that with what I was learning from other music teachers and from actually playing music. And so there wasn't one particular person that I could point to and say, oh, this person taught me how to build instruments. It's more combining information from any available source, like puzzle pieces that you slowly get to put together and, until the picture becomes more complete. So last question before we take a few from the audience here. Um, tell us what kinds of things will the campers expect to see next week? Next week, we're going to talk about guitars. We're going to talk about how they get put together, what uh, guitar making used to be like in a more traditional sense, and what it, what it looks like now for a modern manufacturer. Because you could look at the instrument 300 years ago and think, well, it's not radically different than the instrument we might build now. And yet the way that we go about it is unbelievably different. So. It'll be a pretty fun, pretty fun time. Pretty exciting to see because, you know, we're all familiar with rock stars. We all have our favorite songs and our favorite bands. And you look at what goes into a, a big rock show, you think, 
well, how, what are all the moving pieces that are required for those folks to be playing their music or present this, this big show to us? So to think of all the bits and pieces right down to the very guitars that are being played, it's pretty exciting. Awesome. So uh, we do have our first question in. So what does the process look like for a new guitar design? For a new guitar design, here at Taylor Guitars, it's pretty interesting because we start everything in a very traditional way. Essentially, I'll dream up an instrument that I want to build. So I'll have some idea of something that doesn't exist yet, maybe an alteration to a guitar or something that has like some new characteristics that might be musically useful. And I'll literally get chunks of a tree and take out saws, chisels, hand planes, and make that instrument. You know, it's almost like Geppetto working away <laughs> in a workshop or something. You know, it's a very, very traditional process where it's largely the same as it would have been done 300 years ago. And then once the instrument is completed and we can play it, evaluate it, and know that that's something that we want to build in a, in a larger manufacturing setting, then we'll start, I'll sit down with our team of engineers and machinists, and we start to design a way to create every single component that goes into that design. So by that, I mean a way to hold every component, what the component is, how do you season wood correctly for it? What characteristics does it need to have? How are you going to assemble it? How do you finish it? How do you ensure that it was the part you wanted it to be? So every aspect for one of those things becomes a separate project that we get, uh, we'll make computer models of what that part is. We'll figure out what kinds of tools or what kinds of machines could duplicate the types of cuts that I might've done by hand with a chisel. And so then it becomes kind of swings from the world's smallest workshop to the world's largest, where you try to get this thing ready to be made in a manufactured setting and have it come out exactly the way you want it to. It's really interesting to hear how much technology is entered into this conversation. Um, but yet you, you, you go back to just chiseling away at a piece of wood from a tree. So that wide range is just amazing. Um, I have another question here. I have a 12 year old that is really into music. Other than cultivating his desire for playing music, is there anything else I can do to expand his skills in other areas of music? That's, that's a wonderful question. As far as playing goes, swinging kind of to the musicianship side, if, it, if a kid in particular is interested in music, the best thing that you can do is encourage them to play. It's kind of a positive feedback cycle that'll, that'll occur where the more they play and the more they listen, the better they get. And the better you get at playing music, the more you enjoy it, so it makes you want to do it more, right? And so uh, for someone who's interested in playing music, the broader the range of instruments that you learn to play, so if you're on guitar, continue to play guitar by all means, but try some piano too. Or if you're interested in guitar, maybe try ukulele as well. If you're interested in one style of music, try something that's similar, just departing a little bit. So you kind of work around the margins, like the, the fringe of the, the core interest level. And what that serves to do for a musician is it broadens your kind of your scope of what you're familiar with and it broadens your skill level tremendously. Like as a guitar player, when I was a kid, I was really into kind of you know, rock and roll, what we called surf music, the instrumental guitar-based music that was real popular back in, in the 60s in Southern California. And that led to an interest in what we would call classic rock, as well as rockabilly and blues, which leads further into the jazz guitar world. And, you know, that, that interest level just starts to spread outward until you have a more complete set of influences in a broader picture of what you're, what you're performing and studying. And so start with what you like. A 12 year old who's playing music, start with the songs that they wanna play and make that interesting. Let it be interesting. And then 
start to include some of maybe that, if there's a favorite band, what, what influences went into that favorite band? Look at some of those musicians as well and let it grow naturally from there. So um, we're about out of time. So I have one more question for you. Um, so when you um, pick out the wood or build it or design it, can you predict how it's going to sound? With a pretty high degree of, of certainty. At this point, uh, when I make something up, it's less of it's less a process of trial and error and more a process of knowing how materials work and what mater choosing materials appropriately for the results that you want. And so, yeah, we have a pretty good idea of what something is going to sound and function like before you ever start cutting a piece of wood because you're going to choose your materials intentionally so that you end up with the result you want. Very cool. So I'm excited about next week. Thank you for joining us for this little bit of a preview. Um, so join Andy next week. It's on Wednesday, July 22nd at 1230 Central, 1030 Pacific. And um, until then, everyone have a great day.